Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to go over uh, a famous um, quote from Sister Nelson that uh, essentially alluded to Adam on Um So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you end up liking it, and uh, share it on your social media um, as we review this. Um, so this comes from January 10th, 2016. So President Nelson was not yet prophet at that time. It was still President Monson. And uh, she gave this address. Uh, it's called Becoming the Person You Were Born to Be. And this was at BYU Hawaii. Okay. So, um, and if you'll remember, uh, President Nelson became president of the church uh, around this time, January 2018. Uh, that's when he uh, stepped into that role. So, <clears throat> you know, I think a lot of us are familiar. A lot of times, uh, in talks, like the most important message or like the thing that they want to stress the most is like at the very end of the talk. Okay, so uh, you can read this whole thing. It talks a lot about repentance and being your, your true self and putting aside, um, you know, the influences of social media and stuff like that. Um, okay, but the thing that everybody uh, grabs onto here is this last well second to last paragraph and actually i'm going to start with the third to last um okay so it says my dear brothers and sisters whom i love the reality is that someday you and i each uh will have an individual face-to-face -face interview with the savior himself when this uh, eventuality becomes real to us uh, we will be willing to do whatever it takes to be prepared all right so this seems to be one of sister nelson's uh big things is uh, doing whatever it takes to be prepared. And as you know, I recently, <laughs> I recently shaved my beard because of her, because, uh, during the Kansas, Oklahoma, uh, devotional, she was talking about that, um, basically being prepared for the second coming. And she shared a story about a guy that felt inspired to shave his beard. And, uh, I felt the spirit too. I prayed about it and I shaved my beard and I don't feel bad about it. Okay. So anyway, so here, here's the main thing right here. So now a question as I conclude, what if you learned that the Savior had already returned to this earth? Whoa, uh, that he, as part of his second coming, had already met with some of his true followers in several marvelous large gatherings. Several marvelous large gatherings. That seems to be alluding to uh, Adam on Diamond. I don't know that she's necessarily saying that that's happened, but um, it's on her mind, and now she's the, the wife of the president of the church. Uh, gatherings about which the world, including CNN and blogosphere, knew nothing. If you found out that the Savior was already on the earth, what would you desperately want to do today, and what would you be willing to willing and ready to do tomorrow? And again, this is in the, the context of uh, her talk, Becoming the Person You Were Born to Be, right? Uh, I think uh, what she's basically trying to say is, like, you were sent here at a particular time. You are going to be the people that greets the Savior when he comes again. And, uh, you know, maybe it's already starting to happen, or uh, or shortly it will be. Okay, so the thing that I found interesting here is there's a footnote for large gatherings. There's a footnote, footnote 13. Um, you come down here, and they're not numbered, but... Uh, it's the last footnote. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that footnote for large gatherings, uh, it says, See Bruce R. McConkie, The Millennial Messiah, The Second Coming of the Son of Man, 1982, page 575. Now, I had already done uh, a video, and I'll put, put it in the description below, uh, that's basically an, an excerpt from that book, uh, and this is called He Cometh to Adam on Thy Amen, uh, which is actually uh, pages 578 to 588. So just uh, three pages before this um, is what she is referencing in her talk, okay? So, she, so immediately after what she references, he starts talking about Adam on Thy Amen, okay? Um, now, and I'll, I'll put this there, too. so I'll put the video that I did as well as uh, this uh, PDF if you want to go through and, and read it in full. Um, I was able to find online uh, this uh, archive.org and it 
uh, you're able to, I think you can like look at this stuff for free. You just have to have an account. Uh, I don't have an account, so I guess that's why it's all dark. I don't know. But here's uh, page 575. So let, let's look at it. Maybe you've already uh, read this. Maybe not. Um, the private and public appearances. Uh, our Lord's many appearances. The second coming of the Son of Man consists not of one, but many appearances. Uh, our blessed Lord will come, attended by all the hosts of heaven, and in all the glory of his Father's kingdom. Uh, not to one, but to many places. Uh, he will stand on one continent after another. He will stand on one continent after another. Now, obviously, we all know that he's already come. Like, he came to... Uh, Joseph Smith in the Sacred Grove, right? So that was one appearance. He, he came to the Kirtland Temple. That was another appearance. He came to the Salt Lake Temple and talked to Lorenzo Snow. Um, that's another appearance. We don't know exactly how many times he's already been here, but um, I had never really known this. So I guess Bruce R. McConkie believes uh, that he will stand on one continent after another. That sounds kind of like a, you know, like a world tour. I, I, I don't know. Um, that's just kind of what it sounds like. So he will stand on one continent after another, speak to one great assemblage after another in his work and work his will among the succeeding groups of mortals. Allusions to and some explanations concerning these various appearances are found in the ancient word. Uh, these, however, might well be unnoticed or remain without proper interpretation if it were not for the clarifying views found in Latter day Revelation. For instance, one of David's psalms call, calls upon us to give unto the Lord the glory due, to his, due unto his name. And then, rather enigmatically, uh, the inspired psalmic word claims, The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Uh, the glory of God thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. And a number of similar expressions. Then, the millennial setting is, is shown. Uh, by prophetic assurance. And I'll just, uh, I'll stop right there because uh, then it starts to kind of like go on to the next page. So um, I just found that interesting. You know, um, I guess this is what uh, Bruce R. McConkey expects to happen. You know, uh, now he's passed away, but this is what he expected to happen during his uh, lifetime that at some point, whenever it does happen, that it's going to be, um, you know, one continent after another. So. Uh, again, I'm assuming that maybe that's Adam on Diamond. It might not just be uh, just at Spring Hill, at Adam on Diamond in Missouri. Uh, maybe that's like the main meeting, but maybe it's divided up into these kind of like satellite meetings across the world. So uh, just something I thought I'd uh, bring to your attention if you weren't already aware. I find that pretty fascinating. And uh, I find it fascinating that uh, Sister Nelson was confident enough to um, reference this and use it as part of her talk, right? Uh, it seems like she's trying to maybe get us ready or let us know that this is already happening or, or who knows what. Uh, but that was back in 2016. It is now 2021. So if it hasn't started happening already, I would assume that probably in the near future it, it, it will. Um, so I'm just going to leave it there. Um, Make sure to sub subscribe if you haven't already. Please make sure to comment so I can know what you think about this. Like the video if you liked it. And uh, please share it with anyone that you think will find this interesting. And I'll talk to you guys later.